Hey guys, what's up? I'm here to give you guys a recap on a new episode or my first my first episode recap on the Natsu no Taze Fundo no Shimpan or you could call it the Seven Deadly Sins Seven Deadly Sins Dragon's Judgment on episode 1. Anyways, this episode right here. Uh, not too bad, I guess. I mean, like, uh, many people say that the animation or art quality seem to be improved a bit. For me, I think it just looks like it's still the same compared to the last time it was created by Studio D. Gosh dang it, why them of all people of all blasphemy given to me and my freaking like, um, life given to me. But, anyways, that aside, um... This episode had a lot of things going around the place, you know, so I'm gonna try to focus in simple and simple parts that will make a little sense to sense eventually. So if anything else, yeah, forgive me if it's very vague and very implicit compared to explicit because there's nothing much I can really give out due to the fact of what just happened in last season, you know? That aside, let's just get this started. Okay? Okay. Okay. Let's go. One part of the episode involves like King um Didier along with like um Sario and Tarmio having to go follow Elizabeth due to the fact that she was taken captive by Esther Rosa, you know? Elizabeth apparently is being swallowed up by Esther Rosa's like um out of control abilities of magic, you know, while Gother is following behind them asking Hawk to like um follow them closely, okay? As he has to do something that will like um make up for what he's done, you know? That aside, um, there'll be another part of the episode where Zeldris, Kusak, and Chan Kusak and Chandler are like guarding Meliodas's um eggshell, you know, which apparently is trying to make sure like um they the the transformation will go smoothly. And we see to it, of course, like um that they get interrupted by um Lu Ludisha, who apparently is occupying Margaret's body while Gil Thunder and Hendrickson are are with them are with Merlin and Escanor, you know, to stop Meliodas from transforming into the Demon King and making sure he doesn't cause a nasty rampage, you know. That aside, we have to it that as the episode continues on, um Zel Zeldris, Kusak and Chandler will later on meet Ludishell, Merlin and Escanor face to face, you know. And we see to it that they end up clashing against one another, but not, but not before Escanor ends up trying to damage Meliodas' coon, but egg cocoon, but apparently does it does no, it has no good effect on it. And Chandler warns Escanor, hey, do that again and I will kill you, you hear me? And we see to it that they end up clashing for a bit before like um, Zeldris and Ludashell, that's in Margaret's body, ends up clashing against each other in terms of swordsmanship, you know? While we get to see that um, Zeldris, Zeldris' swordsmanship is on par against Ludashell's swordsmanship, in terms of power levels, it looks like Ludashell seems to be a little bit more, um, what you may call it, um, above others, you know? While Kusak and Chandler, are, their power levels are in the high 100,000s, you know? While Ludashell seems to be um, on a whole nother level, saying that he's a very important asset. And without him, they would be in real trouble. Eventually, um, Margaret Ludashell ends up mocking Zeldris for actually harming a woman's a woman's um, freaking like um, body or face, you know. While Zeldris tells Ludashell off, let me tell you something. My brother is not much of a scumbag like you who will take a, take a woman's body as a hostage and try to try to use it as um, what should we call it? Um, as an advantage over everything, you know? Eventually, we get to see the scene at the beginning and at the end where Bond is wa wandering purgatory. But at the beginning of the episode, Bond seems to struggle in purgatory and almost transform into an ugly demon of the purgatory. Due to the fact that he's immortal here and there, he's not really dying, but he almost lost his mind or his soul. If he didn't think about Elaine or any of his friends or something, he would have really, lo he would really lost his sanity entirely, you know? And eventually, Bond continues to wander purgatory, trying to look for Meliodas, but unfortunately, he can't find them anywhere. We have to it that a strange dragon-type-like creature ends up attacking Bond, and they end up clashing against each other. Eventually, Bond ends up thinking in his mind and says, Man, where are you, Captain? I want to see the woman I love in my arms right now and hold her tightly into my grasp, you know? 
And we see a familiar voice saying that he wants to see his loved one too, you know, that kind of thing. And we see to it, of course, as the episode ends, we get to see that that dragon was actually Melly Otis. And Melly Otis seeing Bond ends up having to cry in total, like, um, total relief and happiness to see his best friend here, you know, in purgatory. Having to hug him and cry, cry in agony, you know. And... Looks like to me, preview of next episode, things are about to get a little hectic here on out, but don't know how this is going to go, but hopefully it might be better. I don't know. Not too bad for a first episode for Nanatsu no Taiza, you know, um, Fundo no Shimpan or Dragon's Judgment, but for the time being, I'll just keep my expectations low for now because, yeah, last season of Nanatsu no Taiza, Made by Studio Dean. All life given to me. Blasphemy. I am not going to lie at all. It was. Not going to say it. Okay. That's about it. Don't know. Here we go. Alright. So until then people. I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm Alpha Zero. Have a good day. And I'll see you guys next time. Alright. Peace out. Bye bye. Toot toot.